This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha. Thanks for uh, tuning in to Think Tech Hawaii. We really appreciate it. Uh, been liking all the emails we get from you guys and the questions and that that have been coming up. I'm Glenn Martinez from Olamana Gardens. This is my co-host is Natalie Cash. Hello, aloha. Yeah, she's the farm manager, the ramrod, chief cook and bottle washer, as they say on a farm, right? Yeah. Good fun, yeah. Well, let's see. First off, I'd like to say we're glad you are out there. I'm glad I'm here. Uh, the old missile crisis. I grew up in Florida. I graduated high school in 1967, and I'd lived in Hawaii right through the missile crisis and all the space launching and that. And the missile crisis for most Americans was Cuba, the 1962 mm. missile crisis, right? Mm. And we were in the bomb shelter era and that, everybody digging holes and pouring concrete and that. And lo and behold, it's like fashion, it comes around again, okay? Yes. So we're back in fashion. So at all amount of gardens, we're building a bunker. And uh, I was really nice. I stopped off and saw some friends on the way to the show today. They saw that uh, we were on uh, NBC uh, Nightly News. Uh, they came out, they interviewed us. By sure circumstance, um, NBC was doing a story on the new sirens that were here in Hawaii. So they came out here last Thursday and they're doing it on the ham radio. So AARRL, that's American Radio Relay League. Um, and that, then their sponsor here in Hawaii, he organized it, and I was one of the people to be interviewed. So they came out to my radio shack, which really is a shack, it's a wooden shack, <laughs> air conditioned, kind of nice shack, with all my radios, and I thought they'd be there for 15, 20 minutes and do their little thing, and those people are always in a hurry. They spent six hours they with sure us. Did. Interviewing myself, Natalie, Joe Spernino, um, Speroni. Huh? Speroni. Speroni. I'm sorry, Speroni. Um, and uh, so it was really exciting. You know, six hours was a bit of a long yeah. day to be, you know, in front of the lights and that. And they came with a full professional crew. Mm -hmm. And then Friday, lo and behold, they went down to the EOC, yeah. the Emergency ma Office, Management Office. And uh, so when they did that, they toured the bunker, they saw the thing, and all that footage that they shot on Friday was on the news Saturday after the false alarm. Yes. The NBC was the only national team with boots on the ground here, yeah. by sheer coincidence, and they were able to show all that footage. So people got to see the very people that run the operation, mm -hmm. et cetera. And so that was on air. They are also able to shoot things, you know, live video, because they had all their cameras and everything yes. else, and you saw people running around Waikiki. But they went in from being here just to do a feature story, more of a background story, and mostly we were told for NBC, their web page, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and so when the false alarm came out Saturday, it went from being just a simple background story to being a full-on mm -hmm. news story, mm -hmm. right? So the team was scheduled just to spend the weekend here and then head home, be back in New York City and LA on Monday morning, they stayed over. And then lo and behold, Monday morning we get a call and uh, they came out to my farm to see, our right, we have a massive container, it's a refrigerated container, a recycled one that I bought used, and that's our bomb shelter. That's what we get into when there's a hurricane or that. If you think your house is threatened, et cetera, you get inside of a matching container that's anchored down to the ground, you know, you're good to go. You're pretty much a bulletproof thing. So that was going to be our bomb blast shelter in that. But I'm real proud to say my association with the Coast Guard Auxiliary, the Coast Guard Auxiliaries were up on the radio. The uh, yeah. uh, ham radio guys were up. Mm -hmm. And within four minutes of getting my alarm of it, I was able to get verification that the Coast Guard had announced that it was a drill and to stand down. And we were able to relay that out to other ham operators and that. And then shortly thereafter, about four minutes later, Tulsi came, Tulsi Gabbard came yeah. out with a tweet. Can you believe that? We're getting national defense news over Twitter. Yes. Go figure. And she tweeted out like after 12 minutes, she gave it out, it was good. And then Brian, our other senator, Schultz. Uh, uh, Brian uh, Schultz. Schultz, Brian Schultz, he was on the phone because he carries a cell phone that has an 800 number on it. So he got the alert all the way over in Washington or wherever he was, and he called back home, and he found out that it was a drill. 
And he kept saying, is the all clear out? Because he had a lot of people calling him. Mm -hmm. And he is the one, he actually, you go up on YouTube, you'll see a, 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 a Skype interview with him where he is the fellow, he dictated the message and he really pushed them to send it out. There was a real hesitation to send out an all clear and the state guys are waiting mm. for the federal guys to give an all clear and the federal guys going, what are you talking yeah. about? You know, So a bit of confusion there. And Brian, uh, between Brian and Schultz, they were our, the, the citizen's best friend in that thing. They pushed to get that all clear out there to stand down. Because on our farm, people were crying, they were grabbing food and water, and amazingly, the number one thing people were doing is tying up their cell phone, calling their parents and saying goodbye, mm -hmm. okay, because they thought that could be it. Mm -hmm. And that. so it was kind of an upsetting day. Well, myself, as a ham operator and as a Coast Guard auxiliarist and uh, as, a, as a farm owner, I think what happened Saturday is a blessing, you know. Uh, I think it's a real wake-up call to look at and, where our competencies yes, are and what we need to improve on. So a lot of people are going to take it way more seriously. I've had the feeling, you know, with my career with the Coast Guard Auxiliary is a volunteer. You're kind of like a volunteer fireman. You're kind of like backup reservist kind of thing. And we, we, we go out and we do boat inspections, and I'm a communications officer in the Coast Guard Auxiliary. And that, and you, you train for all these contingencies. And here in Hawaii, it's mostly... Um, for tsunamis and hurricanes. That is the two most common things you think about going. Of course, on the big island, civil defense type guys are about volcanoes, right? But all of those things, you have a certain amount of warning coming to them. This thing about getting 12 to 14 minutes and to scramble is something else. Yeah. But I tell you what, I think everybody else should go out and buy a little $50 VHF marine radio and you'll get the Coast Guard signal. They'll be going out and they informed a whole lot of people, the clear cut, because that's channel 16, you get emer emergency traffic on that. Uh, the other one is, a whole lot of us, myself included, I dropped the ball. I have not subscribed to the Honolulu Police Station's website. They have an info page. And it's kind of odd how it worked out, according to the reports in the newspaper, the Hawaii Emergency Management Office called the police department within 12 or 13 minutes and told them it was a false alarm. Mm. And then they left it to the Honolulu Police Department to get it out to the public, which is oddly myself, even though I'm in, involved in emergency radio things and that. Do you subscribe to it, Nat? No, I don't. No. So, I'm lost. Of course, now everybody said, well, when you get an emergency thing like this, what you're supposed to do is go tune in your radio, AM and FM. Mm. But there was nothing there, virtually. Right. A few TVs came across saying that, repeating what we saw, you know, take immediate sh shelter, this is not a drill, right? And so, but we didn't hear the sirens. And no. so there was that element of confusion, yeah. all right? You, you know, because you're, you're talking about some pretty serious effort to, you might say, well, look, at some people are putting their kids in, in manholes, in sewages, and things like that. Yeah. Fell out of Sandy Beach, had a heart attack. Uh, it affected a lot of people. It sure One did. of our uh, people that live on our farm, it happens to be a carpenter type of fellow, general contractor kind of fellow, and he was on his drive around Makapu Point. And he pulled over because he knows that tunnel at Makapu Point where the oh, chain yeah. link is right there at the top where the lookout is. And he was going to cut the lock and let the people in because the tourists were totally beside themselves. Yes. Keep in mind, it, 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 after 8 o'clock in the morning, the tourists are all already A at the beaches. A lot of people are out there already. That's right. And there was no all clear. What I found really shocking and surprising, we have no procedure for all clear up to now. And now, because in tsunami, they don't do an all clear. Hurricane, they don't do it. Okay, it's all over. It just kind of winds down and the word gets out. But with missile, you know, you watch any war movie. When they sign the, the siren for air raid, everybody yeah. goes underground. Then you wait for the all clear signal. When I was in high school, we went to, you had a fire drill. What happened, Nat? The, the fire alarm go off? Oh, yeah, and then everybody needs to exit out. Right, you got to get um, out and get stay out. out there until yeah. what? The until all clear. The clear, yeah. Yeah, and then until it's a siren you. or a bell that rings totally mm -hmm. different, and everybody can go back in. After mm -hmm. that, nobody goes back in. So it was just just struck me as really odd that we had not thought about having an all clear. We hadn't gotten there. 
also that there's a lot of, I think it's really fantastic, there's going to be some investigations, you know, and I'm not looking for the heads are going to roll, I'm going for the system's going to get fixed. And I think it'll really bring it in. But I'm real proud of my ham operators. Uh, EARC uh, got up. Uh, one fellow, WH6DWF, Todd, uh, lived in a condo, figured there was nowhere to go and nowhere to hide. So he hunkered down and uh, got on his radio and contacted a net. He did a pretty good job of that. And so when I jumped up and said, hey guys, what's happening? I was able to get answers mm -hmm. in that. So, it was, it was quite an eventful morning, okay? Yeah. And, uh, but I wanted to share that with you and get that off the table. The other thing I wanted to share is I got some emails that says you said you're going to show a tool every week. And apparently we got carried away and we skipped a tool. So I brought in two tools. One is <laughs> I like to get hammered from time to time, <laughs> you know? And so this is, so many people have little leather mans and all these kind of things. And most of us want them to be really lightweight because we're going to carry right. them with us all the time, mm -hmm. right? But this one, Natalie keeps this one where? In, in the truck. In the truck, right? And I got to tell you, the little hammer has done its thing. The, and to be able to actually pull a nail or pull a staple out of a sign in that is coming very handy. It has all the other standard things you normally do. I have wire cutter, you have a pliers and that. So it does all those things. Of course, you have the knife blades that all open out and a bottle opener and that. All really good, but surprisingly, now I would not want to carry this in my pocket. That's a little bit much mm -hmm. to carry, but to have it in the truck, it yeah. has worked its, its wonders. I like yes. it. The other thing I wanted to show to you is it's called a kilowatt meter. That's a brand name, okay? Uh, but they're all kind of watt meters. Mm -hmm. And they, one of my favorite places in Waimanalo is the aquaponics place. It's yes. on the back end of Waimanalo uh, feed store. Yes. And the gentleman there, what's his name now? Trav. Travis. 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 Nice young man owns it. And he took it over. He bought out the owner of Waimanalo Feed Store, yeah. Stan Kadama, mm -hmm. sold him that part of the business in mm -hmm. the back. And that is it's a great place. What's different about it for us in the aquaponics is he's got everything. Yes. He's, he's the only the guy. All supplies that you need for an aquaponics right. system. Right. And because so many times when you're buying an air compressor, you're going to pay as much for the freight as you did buy the air compressor. He's got the things in stock, very popular prices. You know, yeah. it's, it's pretty much about internet prices, okay? Uh, he's pretty, very, very straightforward about it. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and he sells these little things for like $30, $35. And what this does is you plug this into the wall, then you plug in the little mini fridge you got, Appliance. And appliance, whatever you have, you plug it into here, and this will tell you how much power it uses. And so I do it, and I watch it for 24 hours. Now, in our kitchen, where we prepare food and stuff like that, I have about, what, eight refrigerators in a row? Yes. And some of them were getting old, weren't they? Yes, they were. And we went and we plugged it in. Some of the refrigerators were costing 50 cents a day to run. Some were costing $3 a day to run. We got rid of all the $3 a day, leaky, bad seals, etc. Yeah. So the compressor was running all the time. Or they were just dirty, so they were so clogged up. Yeah. And so this is a real tattletale, and to keep you honest, to how much power something uses. Okay. Um, the other big thing I used is just two days ago, I was sitting in my office, and I have a UPS, an uninterrupted power supply. Mm -hmm. Now that's all my Macintosh computers. Also, I've got five ham radios. I've got my VHF radio, I've got my, you know, for the, we've got my Coast Guard radio, I've got VHF radio for the nightly net, I got a uh, HF. HF radio for mm -hmm. talk around the world radio mm -hmm. and that. And uh, I, I find out that uh, all those radios, you want to protect them. Mm -hmm. Well, they're all on UPSs, uninterrupted power supply, battery backup, right? I heard the yeah. thing clicking on and clicking on, right? And boy, it was starting to seem like I'm hearing it a lot. So we went out, we took this, we plugged it into the outlet, you hit the voltage button, and it lit up and it said 102 volts. And you should have 110 to 125. So the low voltage was triggering the thing to kick on. Mm. So Natalie bought me a little tool, I didn't bring it today, but it's a pistol grip thermometer. I'll bring oh, it yes. in next week. You can shoot across the room yes. and take the temperature. Mm -hmm. It's really neat. So I was able to go out to the electrical panel, open it up, 
run it down, 79 degrees, 79, 80, 80, 79, 80, 80, 106. Uh-oh, hot. Pull the breaker out, pull the wires off, clean them up, put them back on, put it back together. Voltage jumps up to 112 volts. Wow, what a difference. So in a lot of things, electrical, you tend not to do anything until it trips the breaker, mm. right? right? But with radio equipment and computers, low voltage is a killer. Anyway, this is a great little thing. We also have, we have generators on the farm and we have these on them yeah. because they have their dials, but they're little round dials like you have in a car to tell you the oil pressure, the temperature and that in the cycle, but they're not real calibrated. They're more like a, not idiot lights, they're better than an idiot light, but they're not really good. So what we do is we take a multi-plug, plug it mm -hmm. in the generator and then put this out where, you, where it's comfortable, where you can see it yeah. and it tells me how much the voltage running, is, yeah. how much amperage is going yeah. through, and then how much kilowatt hour, how much power we're taking out of the thing. Yeah. So it's really kind of cute to have. So this, and also, you push your hertz here, and it tells you the hertz. And I can speed up or slow down my generator to adjust it to be 60 cycle. Okay, and everything yeah. in America is happier, 60 cycle. Good stuff. But anyway, those are two things we want to share with you. But one of the things I know is Jay, the producer here and owner of it, uh, operated this. He likes energy stories. So today we have an energy story for you, right? Yes, we do. Okay. Now, Trump is in the news all the time. But that Trump is T-R-U-M-P, President Trump. Okay? A lot of the news. Something that is coming into the news on a different side is T-R-O-M-P-E, mm -hmm. Trump Pump. And it was invented by the Italians, then it went to France, then it went to Catalonia, Spain. And in Catalonia, Spain, they figured out how to use these trump pumps to make compressed air to come into a blacksmith shop and to have 24 hours to have compressed air. Okay? And so, operate right. tools, machines. Right. right. So I'd like to mention now that, uh, one, if you like to see some videos of some of these things running, go to our YouTube channel, Olamana Gardens. Go to YouTube. You write Olamana Gardens or Glenn Martinez, Bungo, Buco videos coming up. When you get to YouTube, just write Glenn Martinez, Trump Pump, and they'll come up, or Trump Pump in practice, anything like that. Yeah. They'll come up, and you'll see that we've been building these Trump Pumps. Now, I've said Trump Pump a couple of times. I bet you they don't have any idea what I'm talking about, right? Right. So watch this. The best story to see is go up on the internet, say YouTube, and write in ragged shoot, R-A-G-G-E-D, like ragged, like tor, and shoot, like parachute, C-H-U-T-E, ragged shoot, and Trump, T-R-O-M-P. You write those three words, and you're going to see a wonderful story of a Canadian engineer who was out one evening, and he saw water coming through a city, and it had little, little low dams where the water just spills over. And when it spilled over, it was winter time, and it made bubbles. The bubbles got carried underneath the ice. They collect under the ice, and then the ice would explode, and it looked like a moonscape. The guy Pressure. being an engineer, he said, wow. He went home, and he built a model. Well, I was really impressed with that. So we built a model at our farm. So we're going to show you some pictures of that. But basically, here it is in a nutshell. If you, let's say you have a stream coming by and you just divert some water over to the side and you dug a hole. Now in Ragged Chute, they dug a hole 300 feet deep, more than 300 feet deep. They sure did. Then they did a mine shaft 1,200 foot long. Then they came right back up next to the stream and put the water back in the stream. And there's only about 10 foot difference between where the water went in and where it comes out, okay? But here's the secret. It's called isotherm compression. When the water falls down the pipe, they stick little soda straws, tubes in it, and air goes into it, and the water going down pulls the air bubbles to the bottom. Well, it's a scientific fact that for every two feet of depth underwater is one PSI. So if I were to anchor my dive boat in the ocean, say in 30 feet of water, it would be 15 PSI down there. So at 300 feet, it's 150 PSI. Wow. So this gentleman, Mr. Taylor, he had ragged chutes. The water goes down the 300 feet. The bubbles are compressed into the water. And then when it goes sideways, the bubbles start floating up. Mm -hmm. And they gather in a room. And he brought that air up. And he ran a mine shaft. 
and it had a rock crusher that used 5,500 horsepower. And this it was hammering rock 24 hours a day, a silver mine. He had so much air, they sold, they ran a two foot pipe, and there's pictures of it on the internet, 40 miles around the county, they wow. came back. And he sold the compressed air to mm. all the mine because he used air powered tools. Okay, so anyway, we got some pictures of you. I'd like to show it to you. So we'll start going through them, see how far we get here. So here's a, the water just normally coming into a tank. Normally, we just have the water coming in. It just falls in the water. If it splashes, we make a little air, right? Big deal. Okay, we'll go to the next one. Okay, so you see Keep the splash on the bubbles. This, and, huh? The sump tanks down below. This is, is our sump tank gather. down below. So this water, it drains all the way down gravity. When it comes into here, there's a pump connected to that tank, yeah. a small pump. It only uses 1.3 amp, yeah. but it pumps the water from here all the way back to my fish tank, yes. okay? So I have to do that anyway. Yes. So what I'm gonna do is when that water gets back to my fish tank, instead of dumping it in the fish tank, I'm gonna dump it into a pipe that's about 10 foot up. So these are the little sump pumps just sitting on the ground and they have a little float switch and they kick on. They're like little swimming pool motors, mm -hmm. okay? It's mm -hmm. more efficient, okay? Called artesian pumps and I got them at Aquaponics Place. Yes, he did. brings in this specialized equipment, okay? Now swimming pool pump motor uses about 12 amps. These things only use one to three amps, depending on what size you do. Yeah. So the water from this tank is going to be pumped all the way back up the to hill. The go to the next slide. Go ahead, where, there you go. And it goes up through this pumping, go right on to the next slide. Yeah. And it heads up the hill in the three inch pipe, okay? And that's going to go 100 feet, and it's yeah. going to be 14 feet higher than where we are now. Go yeah. ahead, next one. Okay. So what I did up at the top is I cut it and I put a Y. I split the water off, right? And the, the newer pipe you see there on the top going from left to right, as it goes over, it goes up. Go ahead to the next one. Now, see the white pipe going up? At the bottom, there's a shutoff valve. It's straight in line with the thing. Now that water goes all the way up to the top, makes a U-turn, and it drops into the clear pipe on the right. Now it's hard to see through. It got a little frosty out but there is just solid bubbles because the splashing causes bubbles. The force of the water, this water is coming in at 2,500 gallons an hour. It gets pushed down the three inch pipe, carrying the bubbles down. And what's at the bottom, Nat? The buckets. Drums. Drums, the barrels. Right, so instead of building, a, digging a cave way underground, I just ran the bubbles in there. Now you notice where the water level is on the tank, okay? See, it's about two thirds full. The top is compressed air. You see that little meter there? That thing's going to come up to three and a half psi because my pipe is ten foot tall. The water inside is about seven foot tall, but it's got a lot of bubbles in it, so it yes. doesn't weigh that much. So it's left. But when those bubbles come down, they go into this drum, and I collect all the air. So at the end, there's no more air bubbles in it. Yeah. Okay. Then the water goes over and goes to the fish tank where it was going to go anyway. Okay. Yes. So all it cost me was three $10 drums, yeah, yeah some PVC fittings, right, yes. a one-time expense, and now I have free air for the rest of my life, mm -hmm. okay, when this thing is running. Now, I happen to be running the pump anyway, right, you know, going there, period, yes. okay? So, but you know, the, what the real Trump guys do is they go next to a stream, they go over, they dig a hole, drop it down feet, go through drums. So here it comes back over here. These are my big tanks. They're 1,200 gallon tanks. The water's gonna come over here, go up, go over and come down and it's gonna shoot into there, okay? Now that's one of my favorite roosters there, Big Red. Okay? <laughs> so it comes up over and goes around. So when you do that, you know, I get all the air I can. I also have a second one there. It's right behind the rooster there. But anyway, this one here, when the water comes up here, I've been doing this for some time. See the three inch pipe goes up, makes a U-turn, and it goes down to two inch, then it drops into a three inch. It goes down in the fish tank, makes a U-turn, comes back up, one foot less, goes over to that second T you see on the right hand side. And then it goes down again, and you see all those bubbles? That's the bubbles being released underwater. And that is my secret aeration yeah. on my fish tanks, okay? I only have a couple of those little green 40 watt pump as backup because I'm only aerating when the water is being pumped yeah. and the water's on a float switch in the sump tank yeah. so it goes on and off, right? So a little bit, a little bit give and take there, yeah? Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. And uh, 
So here we come around here that you see the fish tank is full of water. That's 1,200 gallons of water, and we keep it up about seven and a half to eight parts per million, which is saturation, okay? That water can only hold so much. And then when it does get there, we let it just fall into the tank and it splashes again. So I get whatever aeration I was getting it from it falling splashing, I still get. Yeah. But in between, I took all the bubbles out in those three drums. Yes. Okay. And then we took, we turned off the two air compressors, we took up two air stones, and they ran full force. They sure did. Yeah. So anyway, so that was some slides to show you. Now, if you'd like to see videos of it running, go to YouTube, type in my name, Glenn Martinez, or Ola Monte Garden, yes. and the word Trump. T R O M P E. Yes. Pump. Yes. Okay. Right. All yeah. right. So we only have about a minute, Nat. You want to sum anything up here? <laughs> <laughs> it's just been remarkable of all the things that's been happening yeah. within the last week. Yeah. I mean, we had NBC News out to the farm twice. Yeah. We was able to um, spend some time with them. Right. We did the Trump pump. Uh -huh. that you did um, addition to the aquaponics. Yep. And yep. Um, there's a lot of good things yeah. coming out from all so of this. So in between missile crisis, we, yeah. we design pumps. That's about <laughs> it. Yep. And we got a request in today for to go build a little 18-watt solar-powered yeah. one. So that'll be our next little fun project. Well, thank you all so much for tuning in to Think Tech Hawaii. We try to keep it current, keep it alive. Yeah. Thank you, Natty. Thank you. Aloha. Aloha. Mahalo.